in the years that you have been documenting, um, for example, the mutilations, would you say that back then there were many, 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 and that it's trailed off? In other words, we can watch what they do. Have there not been as many mutilations in recent years? Is it trailing off? No. They just changed latitude, longitude. Really? Latitude, longitude is a key to animal mutilations, meaning that there are cycles of animal mutilations at certain latitude longitudes over and over and over again, over decades, mm -hmm. probably centuries. And that right now, from 2002 to 2013, there literally have been five or 6,000 mutilations in Argentina alone. Wow. The, the idea that the United States and Canada, because they've been report, mutilations have been reported in every state and every province in Canada now uh, since uh, going back to the middle of the last century and probably back further. And the uh, the conversation that I remember in '79 fall when I started as a complete innocent on a strange harvest. I called the BBC and talked with a producer there because I was trying to find out if they had any more historical information about mutilations than I had from the famous September 1967 case in southern Colorado. And that's where the reporters got it all wrong. They said it was a, a male uh, horse uh, named Snippy. It wasn't. It was a female horse named Lady. That was September 67, the story that went around the world. That was the beginning, the breakthrough of mutilations to the public's consciousness. It was not the beginning of mutilations. And the BBC producer said that they had seen a journal that had been published in Australia about a 1911 case in which 104 sheep were found on an Australian billabong completely bloodless. There was no blood anywhere on any of the white hair. And around the 104 sheep, there were no tracks. No tracks. Not the sheep's tracks, nothing else's tracks, and an ear, eye, jaw, flesh, tongue, genitals, and rectums were cored out in all 104 sheep. Now, if that is valid, we've never been able to get to the people who were there, and it's always been that it was a journal and, and we can't find it. If that's true, though, you're talking about all of the uh, ingredients of the animal mutilations that are present today in Argentina, in the United States, in Canada, in England. It goes on and on where... All of that has occurred and continue to be bloodless and trackless. And in 1911, there were no lasers. There were no uh, helicopters or beams. Right. That could have, okay. So now we have the same phenomena widespread there on that many animals in one site. And then you have sheriffs in 1979 telling me that the perpetrators are creatures from outer space. Why? Because they, with their own eyes, have seen what looked like a helicopter dissolve into a cloud, have seen a beam come from something in the sky out over a pasture, have seen, and ranchers, I talk with ranchers, they will not go on the record because they are so afraid of being bashed by their fellow human beings. Of course. But they say they have seen animals either rise in a beam of light on their ranch or be lowered and dropped from the bottom, which is very consistent with all of the dropped bodies that have broken bones that I have investigated. But the animals come down the beam and are dropped to the ground, and one rancher told me when he saw this, he was terrified and ran. He ran from the site and went back to his house. He waited till the dawn. He walked back out. The cow is where he saw it drop from the beam, and it had the ear, eye, tongue, jaw, genitals, and rectum cord out. Now, these are eyewitnesses which in the history of criminal law, two or three eyewitnesses could convict somebody for murder in a trial. And we are talking about many people 
who have seen the beams, who have seen animals rise or be lowered. And yet, those people are so afraid of being ridiculed, they won't, they'll talk to me, so I'm secondhand removed. I'm not the witness, but I can certainly share the fact that I have heard these the descriptions of these beams lowering and raising animals, and I step back and say, if we could all be honest with each other and the governments be honest, this is enough evidence to open up the fact we're not alone in the universe. Other life forms have been coming here for a very long time. I personally feel no fear in all of this art. I honestly don't. I have walked the planet by myself. I have gathered tissue and fluid and soil. Oh, and I know. I know, Linda. In the real X Files, I would put all of the graphic photos that are really not uh, anything but pristine generally with mutilations, but that I keep the uh, photos separate from children and people who might be offended by the animal mutilation photos in Real X-Files. And I also place all of the content that relates to what we've been talking about the last hour in a whole series. There's probably over 100 reports that I have done at Earth Files in the Real X-Files that relate to this whole issue of uh, containers, soul recycling, uh, genetic manipulation, and the issues of agendas as they have come through human abductees or people who have been in the military or have been exposed. So it's all, everything I'm saying is in Earth Files, and especially for people who are uh, subscribers to Earth Files who have been, uh, who have been readers of a 12-part series I did with a man who calls himself Joshua Ryan Hall. He is a hard-nosed insurance detective in the Northwest. And he came to me after he had heard me do an interview with another abductee who was talking about the issue of conflict, a conflict going on between intelligences about what to do with humanity that has been made and concocted on a planet that has a concocted history and that there is great conflict about whether we survive or not. He heard me uh, doing that particular story, and he got in touch with me and said, I would like to tell you that I have had encounters with the praying mantis with a blonde type uh, has seen some of the grays, but his bottom line was that he was shown a conflict going on between different intelligences over what we are and what should be done, and that a blonde in a room in a craft caused a very detailed hologram, three-dimensional hologram, to suddenly emerge in the room. Many abductees have seen this. And that he was then telepathically given a download as this three-dimensional hologram continued to evolve and become more detailed. And this is sort of a summary. And this is all in the 12 Part Earth Files about Joshua Reinhall. He says that there are advanced intelligences who never invade a planet, never. They have learned to work through DNA manipulation in, let's say, eggs and sperm of mammals to produce fetuses that will grow up with certain genetic traits that will move a society or a planet toward a goal. could be peace. It could be who knows. And that from the perspective of the advanced intelligences, manipulation and placement of a particular egg and sperm to create a certain type can be done 2,000 years ago with the goal of affecting, changing the timeline that Earth 
might have been on 2,000 years in the future. And that they have come to understand how to work with genetics in timelines to evolve in a positive way whole life forms that they're studying. 